Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today we want to weaponize duct tape. The interesting thing is that the adhesive material used for making it sticky is based on rubber. So we're still weaponizing rubber. <laughs> so the first thing that we're going to make is of course the slingshot. Um, and it should be about the same kind of um, dimensions as the Moorhammer, which is really my best design. Let's see. So we only need about eight pencils. This is leftover ammo from my pencil shooter and duct tape. So first we need more narrow strips. It's easily done. Now we're going to take two of the pencils and attach them in a in an asymmetric X like this. So this is how it's going to look like now. We're going to take this in pairs and just loosely attach the pairs like this. Now you should have three pairs that look like this. And now we put them against each other in this, for, in this way. So the middle one is a little lower than the side ones. We loosely attach this bundle. Like this. So now it should look like this. And now we stabilize it with uh, duct tape. So now we are stabilizing it by tightly wrapping the whole thing with the duct tape. So now what we're doing is we're sawing off the excess so that it really looks like this. So now as you see the ends are sawn off and now we need to stabilize the entire construction. So to give the handle more volume, we thicken it up in the middle to give it a pump swell. So this is the finished slingshot. And it is actually very comfortable in the hand because it's uh, a little bit like upholstery. <laughs> and it is really, really solid. It's amazing how much the duct tape is stabilizing it. So this is the final slingshot. I put a double Theora band gold set on it and I'm going to shoot 16mm lead balls with it. Nice headshot. <laughs> so now we'll make a flail that looks really intimidating. For that we need a potato or an apple, doesn't really matter. We need nails, we need a pole and duct tape. So we'll start by simply studying the potato with nails. So this is about how it's supposed to look like. Now take a narrow strip of duct tape and wrap it around the potato between the thorns. So the more duct tape you put on it, the more solid your flail is going to be. But of course, you should cover the entire potatoes. There should be nothing visible from the potato skin anymore. So first what you do is, you take a length of duct tape and fold it over lengthwise. Like this. Then you take another length and put the first one in between, like this. And you can repeat this as often as you want to. More layers means more stability. Now you attach the chain with um, more duct tape. So this should really hold well. Now you take your pole and first thing you do is you cushion the tip with duct tape. So this means that the edges are now no longer sharp enough to cut. Now we simply wrap the band on with more of the duct tape. So this is it. So 
So this is the finished flail. I think it's painful just to look at it. Let's test it. Yeah! So I think it hit it low. It, it's almost smashed it off the board. See the board is cracked. Cracked the entire head. Nice. So the last thing we're gonna make is a Freddy Krueger glove. <laughs> so what we're gonna need for this is a work glove, knives, I'm using these kunai knives, they're very inexpensive but you can use any kind of knife, it really doesn't matter as long as it has a nice blade. Thin pieces of wood, a round rod, can be copper pipe, can be wood, doesn't matter, as long as it's about as thick as your finger and duct tape. So the first thing that we do is we take one of the wooden pieces and attach it to the side of the knife like this. So you see it's now a little bit thicker. Now we take the other wooden piece and attach it to the opposite side. So what we have now done is we have made the knife able to stand upright on the two wooden blocks. Now we take the rod and insert it into the glove in one of the fingers, like this. Now we take the knife and put it on the finger, like this. Now we pull the tube out and we can put on the glove. And what we now have is the first Freddy finger. It's really solid, it's kind of impossible to get it off. If it's now too loose, simply re-wrap it with another strip of uh, the duct tape. So I have finished my left glove already for you, so you can see how it's going to look like. So this is the finished glove. So you can see it's really nice. <laughs> and I have different punching techniques, like this, right? And uh, of course this, <laughs> and it's also nice for just um, scratching your head. <laughs> Let's see how it works against this melon. <coughs> Woo! That wasn't even hard. As a little bonus, I'd like to show you something new. This. <laughs> what this is, is it's the world's first chainsaw sword. As you see, it's a bi-hander and I can, with the flick of a button, turn on the chainsaw. <laughs> and I made a scabbard for it, so I can put it away at any time. Okay. So this is certainly not the most powerful chainsaw sword, but I think it's a good start. The battery pack is inside the handle, that's why it's so long and thick, but it actually gives you a very firm grip on it, and I think it looks most intimidating. <laughs> okay, well... Well, I hope you liked it. That's it for today. Thanks and bye-bye.